Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to share with you three tips for taking better street photos. And these are going to be location-based tips and we're going to be looking at some photos to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Also, before we get going, I am about to release a Lightroom preset collection. There's a mailing list that you can join so that you can know when this collection comes out. Now, if you don't like mailing lists, don't worry. I don't like them either. I can only think of one mailing list that I'm subscribed to that I want to be subscribed to. The rest of them are, are probably mistakes. Uh, and by the way, that mailing list is by um, Ugg Monk, Jeff Sheldon. Great company, sweet dude, he makes great shirts. This is actually an Ugg Monk shirt. Anyway, I hate annoying mailing lists and I don't want your mailing list to be an, for me to be annoying. So this will involve occasional product updates like the one that is going to happen whenever I release the preset collection, occasional, and then occasional, Occasional. Things I like type of emails. Inspiring photos I may come across. Or you know, like, I don't know, three tips for taking better street photos. Something like that, things I like. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be yet. It's gonna evolve, but at least right now. Occasional, those things. Links below if you would like to join that mailing list. Also, if you're interested in that, if that's an interesting thing to you, please let me know, this whole mailing list concept. And if there are things you'd like to see, let me know. Anyway, let's begin. This first photo is going to demonstrate our first point of the day, and that is to go where the action is. This photo is a great example of me going where the action was. This is on a beach outside of San Diego. It was a very beautiful beach, and there was a lot of things going on in terms of people. And th this tip's a very people-centric. Uh, tip, by the way. There was surfers. I grabbed some other photos of a couple of people playing hacky sack. I think somebody was throwing a f football or a frisbee. Uh, I think there was like, f you know, campfires. A lot of fun things going on. There's some beaches that are more exciting than other beaches. There's also something to knowing the time of day that the people are going to be there. But in this case, there was a surfer who was walking and he, you know, he's walking from right to left. I noticed that he was going to align with these birds. And I was like, oh boy, this is, this is going to be glorious. So I stood there and took a couple of photos and I really like how it turned out. Uh, next we have this photo. This was taken at Venice Beach Skate Park. And that is certainly a place of action. There are a lot of talented people there zipping around, doing flippity doos. It was a lot of fun. It was a unique place. It was a unique, um, skate park environment, really, and there was a lot of foot traffic, or I guess I should say wheel traffic. <laughs> I can think of like five photos from that day that I'm very happy with. Next we have this photo from another beach. This one is on the opposite coast of the United States. This was taken in Florida. There was a fireworks celebration. It was either Independence Day or New Year's, I think, probably Independence Day. Uh, this is another example of going where the action is. It's an event where people gather and they were gathering to watch something visually spectacular. We had some fireworks being shot off of a barge in the Atlantic Ocean. So you have a bunch of people gathered around, you have a lot of opportunities for serendipity in that type of environment. Okay, tip number two, visit the same location over and over. This is an example of that. This was a place that was nearby where I lived in Salt Lake City when I lived in Salt Lake City, and I had, you know, visited this place a couple of times to capture the trains coming by, but this photo is a unique example of that location because there was a snowstorm and you had this lovely, dramatic, moody feel. Um, it was at night, you know, you have all this, the, the nighttime lights on, the, the beam on the front of the train. It, was a, it turned out really nicely. And also, it's a good idea to bookmark places. Whether you bookmark them in your wet computer inside of your head, or your dry computer, or a notebook, or I guess a stone tablet. I think that's what the millennials are doing now, nowadays. So remember these places and then strategize about what times you could go there and how that would affect the resulting photos that you would achieve. This is a good example of that. You could go to this place in the daytime on a bright summer day and you would get that kind of photo. Or you could go to this place at night in a blizzard and get this type of photo. Perhaps there's a train convention in town and so you're gonna have trains coming through that are, you know, from, they were the trains of yesteryear. They're, they're made of, of wood or maybe there's no trains at all that day and you just want a sentimental photo of you and your significant other walking on the train tracks into the sunset, even though it was, it was a north to south 
train line. Photoshop. This is another example. This was taken at Salt Lake City Airport, also when I lived in Salt Lake City. And if you've followed this channel for a while, you may know that I visited this place frequently. And because of that, I was able to capture a, a plethora of different options of angles and planes and times of day, cloud coverage, differences in light. It gave me plenty of time to better master the area and, and build muscle memory for the area, knowing which angles tend to work better than other angles and what angles have I not explored yet. Maybe I can explore that one this time. I didn't explore it last time. And also, once again, this is an example of going where the action is. We have giant flying buses with two jet engines on them uh, pretty close, so that's cool. We also have this one taken in Park City, which is near Salt Lake City. It's where they hold the Sundance Film Festival. This is an interesting case because I captured this one, I believe in the first couple of times that I visited Park City. Whenever I would visit Park City, I would go back to this alley and try to capture more photos that were successful, like this one, and did not have a lot of luck. So sometimes, you get a really good photo quickly and then never again. <laughs> and then sometimes you wait a really long time and then finally get the, get the successful photo. Either way, me putting myself in this alley gave me more opportunities for serendipita. Then we have this one, which was not taken by me. And this place probably has very different lighting according to what time of day you go there. So by returning to this place over and over, you could see the patterns and lighting, what it does. Also, once again, returning to the place over and over will create opportunities for serendipity with people. We see that there's a stroller coming through with some yellow on it, which matches the environment nicely. Also, the you know there's a general yellow and black theme to the people in this, this shot, and of course, a yellow and black theme to the shot as a whole. So the whole thing feels quite wonderful from a from a, a color palette standpoint. So we have a lot of things aligning beautifully in this photo, but you're not always gonna get this shot the first time you show up to a place. So bookmark it and come back or don't. I don't care. But what I do care about is your well-being. So be sure to eat a healthy diet and exercise regularly. Tip number three is try different angles. And to demonstrate that, I have a couple of photos by my Chicago living friend and photographer. His name is Daniel. And he took photos of the uh, Christmas trains when they showed up in Chicago for Christmas. Shocker. Here we have a photo taken from up high, I believe with a drone. He does a lot of drone photography. We have the train coming through. We can see the city in the background. We see the lights from the train on the side of these buildings as it's going by. So we have a very specific angle of this train that's, that's quite exciting. And because we're up high, we're able to include the cityscape and other elements as well. It's a, it's a, it's a certain kind of photo. But if we scroll down, we have this photo taken from below the train above the street, but below the train. We're looking up at the train now, completely different angle. This one was taken on his feet, um, the traditional way. <laughs> Although not too traditional because he wasn't using like a wet plate camera for this. But you can see how different these two photos are based on the angle shift. Now, of course, location shift as well. But my point is, is when you go to a place, look at it from different angles. Don't just shoot from eye level. Uh, don't just shoot crouching down. Try to find ways to get up higher. If you have a drone, maybe throw a drone up. You, you can, you know, your angle is gonna change dramatically at that point. And if you go where the action is, return to the locations over and over and try different angles, you're gonna be, it's, there's gonna be opportunity flowing forth like a waterfall upon your face. You might drown in all the serendipity. But hey, with all that said, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. I would love to hear when any one of these tips have paid off for you. Please feel free to share below. I'll be happy to engage with you guys. And you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at James the Red. If you enjoyed this video, there's a like button for that. And if you would like to see more of my videos, there's a subscribe button for that. Oh my gosh, I have to write that down. That's fantastic. Don't forget to eat your vegetables and brush your teeth. Peace and blessings. Have a good day. Bye.